Hi, this is Demetria Clark with Homes by Demetria, serving Patrick in Henry County, Virginia, Martinsville, Ridgeway, Collinsville, and Bassett. So I am a real estate agent with Long and Foster, and this is something that's just my own opinion. I am not giving professional or legal or any other kind of advice in this podcast, but I am going to share some tips with you and hopefully you'll find value in them. So what are several ways to increase the value of your home? So that's something that people ask a lot. Well, number one is to renovate or remodel. So one of the best ways to increase value in your home is by renovating or remodeling. You can add or update new features to make your home more attractive and functional. This could include a kitchen upgrade, which for a kitchen upgrade, it could simply just be changing out the style of knobs or pulls that you have on your door to make them look modern and contemporary. It could be painting your cabinets. It doesn't have to be a full gut job (laughs) to make everything look better. You can upgrade your bathroom, add a deck or a patio, or update your landscaping. Those are simple things that you can do. Other things that you can do will have average percentages that give you a return on investment. So these are just examples. These are not guaranteed numbers. These are just the standards throughout the industry, and it doesn't mean This is what your return on investment would be necessarily. I know that I've had this in my own homes, these kinds of return on investment. And so I'm going to talk to you about what the highest ones are all the way down to the lowest ones out of the most common projects done. Okay, the number one is refinishing hardwood floors. So make sure they're actual hardwood floors and not engineered floors. You can refinish some engineered floors, but they're generally not as thick as hardwood floors. So you don't want to actually end up making a bigger problem for yourself by thinking that you can refinish a floor that isn't really easily to refinish. Clients love original hardwood floors, especially if they're in beautiful condition and have been refinished because they can actually see themselves putting their furniture into the space, not seeing themselves going, oh, we're going to have to refinish these floors before we get in. So that could be something that could be really beneficial. Adding new wood flooring can give you 118% return on investment, where refinishing a hardwood floor can give you 147% return on investment on average. So upgrading your insulation is another one that you can do. Lots of people like hearing that the house is more energy efficient and that generally gives you a recovery cost of about 100%. So you can usually get most of your money back when you upgrade insulation. Converting a basement into a living space, it can be a really good idea to help increase value, but If you're going to convert a living space just to sell, so if you're going to convert a basement into a living space just to sell the home, you may not find that it's going to give you the return on investment that you want. It's generally about 86%, but if it's something that you're going to do and you're going to use and live in for a few years, you'll definitely, your money will go much further for you that way. A closet renovation can bring in about 83% of the recovery costs. So making a closet more usable offers a great return on investment. Now, you can also get more bang for your buck if you do certain things yourself or you make things, you know, if you put in shelving and you edge it or you do things to make it look a little bit more streamlined and high-end without all of the additional streamlined and high-end cost. There's things you can do like you can add cupboards and make it look like a built-in. There's lots of things you can do And if you go to social media, they have these ideas everywhere. So they don't have to break the bank. So that's a good thing to always remember is just to get inspiration based on what other people have done. Converting an attic into a living area can usually get you about 75% of the recovery cost. Complete kitchen renovation is about the same. If you're going to put in a $100,000 kitchen to move, you're probably going to be, you know, sad that you're not going to get the whole amount back. 
So if you know that you're going to move in five years, but you really want the kitchen, do the kitchen sooner than later. So at least you can get some use out of it too. That would be my advice. I wouldn't do it just to sell it. I would do some upgrades just to sell. I wouldn't necessarily redo my whole kitchen just to sell. The same goes with the bathroom renovation. That'll only bring you in about 71%. Spaces like kitchens and bathrooms are really personal. So I rarely find myself like just being in awe of someone else's kitchen because I always see things that wouldn't work for me. I don't think I'm that unique. I think there's lots of people who love, you know, different kinds of spaces. And there's a, some people who are really good space visualizers and they can see things like wasted space or they wouldn't like, you know, working in a space. So these people are also going to be your, your potential buyers. So renovate in a practical way more so than what's super fancy or super on point right now. If you use every single trend that's popular right now, your kitchen's going to look out of date when that trend is no longer popular. So sticking to basics, especially if it's a house that you know you're going to be selling in a few years, that can really be helpful. So a kitchen upgrade can bring in about 67% and a new bathroom addition can bring in about 63% and a new primary bedroom addition can bring in about 56%. So that's why I say like, you know, making sure that you can actually get some use and benefit out of the space will make your money go further. Improving your curb appeal is a great way to improve the value of your home. I'm not saying that you need to put in $20,000 worth of landscaping, but cleaning things up, trimming hedges, edging along walkways, things like that can make a huge difference. So can doing things like repainting your front door or the exterior of your house, you know, really weed whacking. If you've got a bunch of, you know, if you have beautiful brickwork on your sidewalk, but it's covered with weeds, getting those out of there. Upgrading your front door or your door hardware can be another way to really improve your, you know, curb appeal, or it could also be like adding a, a new mailbox or repainting your mailbox. Little things like that can make a huge difference. Having things that are more energy efficient. So when you upgrade for yourself, make sure that you are purchasing energy efficient products so they can give you added benefit in the long run and benefit when it comes time to sell. And so everyone, you know, look, it's not fun. It's the name of the game. You're going to eventually, if you buy a home, you're going to have to upgrade your roof, your HVAC, you know, um, your appliances. So upgrading from the start with things like practicality and energy efficiency in mind from the beginning I think that that's really going to help. I also think it's great when you're planning on selling and you're having people coming through the house, make sure all your air filters are clean. Make sure your windows are clean. Things like that just make people feel like, wow, this house really has it together. You can add additional living space to increase the value of your home. This does not mean you necessarily need to add a new room or convert a basement or attic. It can be that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. You can change the shape of the space by putting in good storage solutions. People really like being able to be like, wow, I know where I can put my stuff because everybody's got stuff, right? You can also consider adding a sunroom or screened in porch to create additional living space. Keep your house clean and maintained. There is nothing like going to look at a home that you want to potentially buy and it's a mess. If you're trying to sell your house and you want to get the most for your money, declutter, get all your stuff out of there. Nobody cares how cute your kids are or what they did in first grade. I know it sounds awful. They just don't care. They don't want to see you. They don't want to envision you in the space. They want to envision them in the space. I went as far as, you know, the last few times that I moved, I had all of our stuff in a pod so nobody could see anything about us and I could have this space just look really clean and sharp and ready to roll as soon as people came in. If you have pets, your house cannot smell like pets. Make sure you keep that vacuum cleaner going 24-7. If you have animals, so you're not trying to do like 
we're going to be there in a half hour to show the home and you're trying to do like a crazy, crazy clean in 20 minutes so you can get out of there before everyone shows up. Buyers have a much easier time when they can envision themselves in the space and they're going to want to envision themselves in a clean, bare space. If you have a bunch of funky artwork or, you know, anything like that, it's really hard for some people to take that off the wall and imagine the house without it. There was a house that we looked at and we got a great deal on it because the guy was an artist and the real estate agent said, you need to take some of this stuff down. People aren't liking it. They don't want to look at the house. You know, they had, you know, he had uh, weird fish stained glass windows and cowboy curtains and rodeo stuff. I mean, he was just a visual artist who did all different kinds of things. And basically every piece of furniture he had was painted or had weird print on it. And I think it was really overwhelming for most people. I'm really good at stripping a space down to nothing. And I don't care what you have in it. I'm really good at going straight for the bones. A lot of people aren't able to do that. And if you're not able to do that, why would you want to look at a space like that makes you anxious or uncomfortable? So think about your space differently. Don't look at your home as if it's yours when you're getting ready to sell. Look at your home as if you're coming in to look at your home and get everything out of the way. Nobody needs to know that you have 487,000 whatevers. Get them in boxes, get them safe. And then, you know, you're going to have less of a chance of somebody accidentally breaking something or anything like that. Like, just make sure your your space is really clean and use words like, I need to make this space look bare to myself. So then that way you really put the effort in and making sure that, you know, if you have nail holes in the wall, that they're patched, that the walls are clean, the floors are clean, the baseboards are clean. Little things like if the baseboards being clean can transform a space. It can just make it look so sharp because everywhere you look, it's clean. Upgrade technology and appliances. So updating your home's technology and appliances can make it attractive to more buyers. People are really getting into smart home systems. Some people really, really like it, or they really like home theater systems. I wouldn't necessarily put in a home theater system just to sell my home. But if you're going to do some upgrades, you can make them smart upgrades and things that you can also get some advantage from. But overall, the best way to keep your home worth every penny is it being spotless for all showings. I cannot express this enough. No dust bunnies, dog hair, cat box smells. Get rid of all the mess. Also, look, if you have an animal and you don't think your house smells like that animal, get someone else in there with a nose or just assume that it it does. Look, I've got dogs. I live like on a farm. I know my house at times probably smells like a farmhouse, especially if it's been raining and the dogs have gotten wet. I know that and understand that. But if I was selling this house, it would be cleaned. I probably would hire someone to come in to help me deep clean. And then nobody with fur or feather or anything would be allowed near the place while I'm trying to get it sold because that makes my life easier. Obviously, that isn't necessarily something you can do if you have children and pets. But if you keep that vacuum cleaner glowing, you keep cleaning things out, do not plug in every one of those plug-in air fresheners or go crazy with your essential oil burners to make the house smell good because guess what? That really freaks people out. They're like, what are they trying to hide? Is it must? Is it mold? Is it might? You know, um, you know, what are they trying to what are they trying to hide? And so the reality is, is that you can use, you know, if you want to use something to really freshen the air, use something really light, like a lemon or a little bit of peppermint essential oil or something like that, just to make it look and feel nice and light and clean. But you definitely don't want to overdo it. By implementing these strategies, you can increase the value of your home and make it more appealing to potential buyers if you decide to sell it in the future. And the reality is, is that it's your home. But when it comes time to sell it, it is your home you're trying to get the most money for. And a lot of people get really, really rooted on 
who they want to sell their home to. And the reality is, is you have no say over that. And you don't necessarily want to. You want someone who wants to buy your home because they love your home. But you don't need them to fall in love with you. You don't need them to like your style of furniture or artwork. You just need them to buy the home. Because at the end of the day, when they buy your home, that gives you the opportunity to either buy another home or move into a space with someone that you're marrying or, or, or moving in with. So the reality is, is just really think about things differently when it comes time to selling your home. And remember, these things aren't personal they're just practical. So have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for listening to Homes by Demetria. And if you have any questions, you know how to contact me. So please do. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.